So also tonight, the House Judiciary Committee is hoping to hear from Special Counsel Robert Mueller a week from this Wednesday. The president tweeting that this is... Um, just a political move, he says, by Democrats. Quote, why would the Democrats in Congress now need Robert Mueller to testify? Are they looking for a redo? Because they hated seeing the strong no collusion conclusion, he writes. There was no crime except on the other side, incredibly not covered in the report. We know that there are investigations into that. That's a separate aside. And now obstruction, he wrote. Bob Mueller should not testify. No redos for the Dems. Here now, Trey Gowdy former House Oversight Committee chairman, and Ken Starr, former independent counsel and author of Contempt, a memoir of the Clinton investigation. Both are Fox News contributors. Gentlemen, great to have both of you here tonight. Thank you very much for being here. Um, so Thank just you. on that question first, I guess, let me go to you first, uh, Trey Gowdy. Do you think that Robert Mueller should testify? Well, it's going to be hard. It's, he's not going to have a lot to say because DOJ policy does not allow him to discuss derogatory information against an uncharged person. So what the Democrats want is for him to painstakingly go through all mm -hmm. of the information he had that led to obstruction or that they think leads to obstruction. And the conclusion is he didn't indict him. So DOJ policy doesn't allow that conversation. I'm not sure what else he can talk about. So you're saying the unredacted information would be the one thing that they don't already have because everything else is already in the report, correct? So well, there's even, not much he could add to that. Well, even the unredacted information, I mean, some of it by law he cannot discuss, right. lots of it by law he cannot discuss, but even what is, is unredacted, the Department of Justice policy is you cannot discuss derogatory information against someone you did not indict. The department doesn't speak in press conferences and reports. They use indictment. So either indict or shut up, and he didn't yeah. indict. <laughs> um, you know, I think one of the main, one of the things that they would probably love to ask Robert Mueller, Ken Starr, is, you know, about his decision not to indict and whether or not it was completely separate from the issue of whether or not you can indict a sitting president. I mean, th this to me is, is where, because we heard from the Attorney General Bill Barr, and he said there were several instances where several people were in the room and Robert Mueller said, Clearly, according to Bill Barr's testimony, I'm not worried about the OLC decision, the Office of Legal Counsel decision. I put that aside and I decided whether or not we could right. indict and decide not to indict. If he has a different story than that in, in this testimony, that will be news. Oh, yes. In fact, I think he will not say that because he had his opportunity, that very elaborate report, 446 pages. So he's got to stick with the report. He can't have a latter-day inspiration. And so in terms of the president, the president has the authority to direct Robert Mueller, through Bill Barr, not to testify. But I doubt that that's going to happen. I don't think that the president is going to cross his own attorney general, who I think has been doing a great job mm -hmm. under this unremitting uh, criticism. But in terms of Bob Mueller, he's got to stay with what he has written. Those 446 pages, the redactions, I've been through these, not the redactions, but I've seen where the redactions are. 10% yeah. of book one, which is the real book that's on Russian collusion, there was no collusion. There were contacts, not collusion. But let's face it, the name of the game now is do we impeach? This is what the House of Representatives is all about. And that yeah. has to be book two. Let's put up a quote uh, from a Washington Post piece on what Nancy Pelosi told Democrats on that behind closed doors. She said Trump had engaged in a type of behavior that prompted the move to impeach Nixon in, in 1974. This person has not only ignored subpoenas, he has said that he's not going to honor our subpoenas. What more do we want? Um, she has sounded at times like she's against impeachment, at times like she thinks that there's no right. choice, Trey Gowdy. Um, but, but clearly this is the political decision that they're trying to wrap their arms around. Yeah, the reason I'm smiling, Martha, the Democrats and the D.C. media never met a subpoena for the first six years I was in Congress that they could embrace. Uh, the, the Obama administration routinely ignored requests for information, so God knows that can't be an impeachable offense. I didn't think Rod Rosenstein should be impeached. I didn't think John Koskinen should have been impeached. It is the political death penalty. So you need to be very careful when you use or how you authorize the use of what is tantamount to the political death penalty. Yeah. They're not going to succeed. The jury's not going to go along. This is about fundraising and placating your base. You know, in terms of, um, of what you said earlier, Ken Starr, I want to ask you about, you said that Bob Mueller deserves the sharpest criticism for sandbagging Bill Barr. What did you mean by that? Terrible. 
Well, his letter that was then leaked on the very eve of Bill Barr's testimony was essentially, I believe, an unfair, whiny complaint when he wasn't saying that the letter, the March 24th letter from Bill Barr that summarized the conclusions, which he was obliged to do. That wasn't just a discretionary call. Bill Barr was obliged under regulation to do exactly what it did. Then here comes Bob Mueller with this letter, which is then leaked. That is, to me, the unforgivable sin. He, Bob Mueller, badly injured this attorney general, and the attorney general didn't deserve that. But, of course, that created its own huge firestorm, including suggestions that the, uh, that the attorney general was totally mischaracterizing the report and so forth. When you look at that March 24 letter, I think Bill Barr was honestly trying to do the right thing and to do it in the right way. Ken Starr and Trey Gowdy, thank you, gentlemen. Great to see you tonight. Thank you so much for being here.